Well, hello, and today we're going to start this video with a little bit of algebra. This is a pre-algebra um, video, pre-algebra review, so we are transitioning from basic math or arithmetic to a little bit of algebra, uh, probably a couple of sections of algebra, and then a little bit of statistics and probability. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start. Today we're going to do some simplifying expressions. Simplifying expressions. We're going to solve some equations. Now with the solving equations, I'm not going to do a lot <coughs> of properties because this is pre-algebra. Uh, we start getting into more properties with the Algebra 1 review, but we're going to do some basic solving equations. The third thing we're going to do is we're going to do some polynomial operations. Uh, in other words, some adding and subtracting of terms, polynomial. We're going to talk about what a polynomial is. Um, and basically, adding and subtracting uh, polynomials is adding and subtracting expressions, if you want to call it that. Uh, and then four, we're going to talk about linear properties. Linear is basically graphing. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what is the general form of a line. And those are the four things we're going to be covering on this video. So this may be a pretty lengthy video because I'm covering, well, the first three things are related, and then the second, the last thing, the fourth thing, linear properties, is kind of a breakaway from the first three. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Simplifying expressions. Now remember, we talked about in the last video, an expression does not have a what? It does not have an equal sign. So therefore, you can't solve it. The only thing you can do with a expression is simplify it, okay? And we're going to get into that in just a second. Where the expression has no equal sign, an equation has an equal sign. And you solve an equation. So with that being said, let's go ahead and let's simplify some expressions. And I'm going to start you off with a little bit of mathematics, a little bit of arithmetic. And we're going to simplify two-fourths. We're going to simplify two-fourths. And you've done this in basic math. Anytime you deal with fractions, you always want them in a simplest term. You don't walk into Lowe's or Home Depot and ask for a half a foot of rope. I mean a two-fourths feet of rope. You walk in and ask for a length of rope about a half a foot. You don't walk in and say, I want two-fourths feet of rope. So all fractions are reduced. And reduced means simplified. So two-fourths is equal to, and of course that is called uh, we're making it equal to, and 2 will go into both. So we're basically removing a factor of 1. 2 over 2 is 1, and that gives us 1 half. Now, I have just simplified an a, a mathematical term. Okay, now the difference between a mathematical term and an algebraic term is a mathematical term has numbers whereas a algebraic term has letters or a 25 cent word for letter is variable, meaning an unknown. 
So let's start off simple. And let's start off with x squared over x. Now this is a this is an expression. It's an algebraic expression. And we can we can solve it. We can not solve it. We can simplify it two or three different ways. Uh, from the previous videos on exponents, we know that a base raised to a second power means that we can rewrite that as x times x over x. And of course, x over x, that is a factor of 1. Anything over itself is 1. So our answer is x. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Our answer is x. Now there's another way we can do it. In the previous video, we talked about exponents, basic exponential laws, which is the product rule and the quotient rule. And we talked about scientific notation. And we know that if you have a base and the base is the same, then you can subtract the exponents when you divide, and you can add the exponents when you multiply. So we are dividing here. So I can rewrite this. I'm going to just rewrite it down here. I'm going to put or. We can go x squared over x. And we know that since this is nothing there, we know that's a, a 1 right there because it can't be 0 because anything raised to the zero power is one. So you can't have a zero there, so it has to be one. And I can rewrite that since these bases are the same. Let's highlight those bases. Those bases are the same. We can use the quotient rule and subtract the exponents. And that's going to be equal to x to the first power, just like right there. Now there's no need when you have x to the first power, there's no need to write x to the first power. Uh, it's not simplified. So you would rewrite x to the first power as x. Now we have just simplified an algebraic expression. Now that's the basics of it. That's the basics of what you're doing with an algebraic expression. You're taking it and you're trimming. It's like a steak. And, or a piece of ham, and you trim the fat off of it, you basically are trimming the fat off of it. Well, what if x is equal to 3, Hubert? Well, if x is equal to 3, let's go ahead and plug it in over here. I'm going to plug it in in blue. 3 to the second power over 3, which is equal to 9 over 3, which is equal to 3. Well, or you can just plug x in right here, and that's equal to 3. So we got the same answer. We just didn't have to go through all the mess because we simplified the algebraic expression. Think of it like this. Back a long time ago, you had a phone that looked like this. And that was called a brick phone. And now through mathematics and science, we have taken that brick phone and turned it into, remember the flip phone? And then we turn that into a smartphone. So now we have turned a brick phone that weighed about a pound, two pounds, whatever, I don't bag phone, brick phone, whatever. We've turned it into a tack phone or a flip phone, and then we turned it into a smartphone. So this is your brick phone. And this is your smartphone. You've just gotten rid of all the plastic. You've gotten rid of all the, the big components in the cell phone. And you've scrunched it down to a smartphone. And that's what simplification of algebraic expressions are. Okay, let's do another one. Let's try to do, we're going to put two or three. Uh, exponents together with bases. x to the fifth, y to the fourth, z to the third, 
over x squared, y squared, z squared. Now, when you see something like this, the first thing you ought to do is breathe. Because a lot of students see this and they, they start freaking out. The first thing you want to do is you want to break it up. x to the fifth over x squared times y, can't write, y to the fifth over y squared times z to the third over z squared. And now you have same base here, quotient rule, same base here, quotient rule, same base here, quotient rule, and do it. So x to the 5 minus 2, y to the 5 minus 2, and z to the 3 minus 2. And of course you're multiplying. Oh, that's supposed to be a 4 right here. My, my bad. Let me erase that. And that's a 4. And that changes that to a 4. I apologize for the extra marks, but for some reason, my board this morning is wanting to put extra marks over everything. So, anyway. Now, what is 5 minus 2? That's x to the third. y to the second. And z to the first. Now, I'm dotting that z in, that first because again, you do not need to write that one there. I mean, it's not mathematically wrong. It's just not simplified. So I would rewrite this as x cubed, y to the second, and z. Now let's talk about it. Remember, this is a smartphone. This is your latest off the assembly line Apple phone or whatever you call the Apple products. I don't use Apple products. I use Samsung. And, you know, your latest LG, your latest Samsung, your latest... And your brick phone is up here. It's going to be a big brick phone. There we go. There's the antenna. So there's your brick phone. And so let's see what happens. Do both phones still make a phone call? Yes. So we're going to do x is equal to 1, oops, sorry, x is equal to 1, y is equal to 2, and z is equal to 3. So plug and chug. 1 to the 5th, 2 to the 4th, 3 to the 3rd, over 1 to the 2nd, 2 to the 2nd, 3 to the 2nd. Now, 1 over 1 is 1, so that just goes to 1, okay? 2 to the 4th over 2 to the 5th to the 2nd, we can subtract those exponents and you get 2 to the 2nd. So 1 times 2 to the 2nd, and then 3 to the 1st, because 3 minus 2 is 1. And that's going to give you 1 times 4 times 3, which is 12. So I just made a phone call with my brick phone. Now I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to say 1 to the third power, 2 to the second power, 3 to the first power. 1 times 4 times 3 is equal to 12. So I just made a phone call with my smartphone. It just took less time because over here I had to do all the, do all the computations. So we still got the same answer. And that's the whole point about simplifying algebraic expressions. You're taking all the stuff you don't need off, and you're getting it down to a condensed, simplified version. Now, the biggest problem is students don't know the difference between an expression, an equation, and a linear function. And that's why I broke those up into three separate items. We're doing expressions, and we are simplifying them. All right, let's do another one. I'm going to let you take a minute and do one. I'm going to throw some negatives in there for you so you can, so you can, a little bit of a challenge. So x to the fourth, 
y to the negative third, z to the fifth, over x to the negative one, y to the second, z to the negative three. Now, pause the video and go ahead and take a minute and work on that problem. All right, so here we are. And I'm gonna, since I've got the same basis, I'm gonna break it up. So this is gonna be x to the fourth over x to the negative one times y to the negative three over y squared times z to the fifth over z to the negative three. Now, as you can see, we've got the same basis, so I'm gonna use the, the quotient rule and that'll give me x to the 4 minus a negative 1 times y to the negative 3 minus 2 and then z to the 5 minus a negative 3. Notice how I put a set of parentheses around the negative that was on in the denominator. Now, why do I do this? Because you need to bring attention to that because a lot of students, if you if, if they're going to get this problem wrong, they get it prop, they get it wrong because they say four minus one and they get a three on the X, and five minus three, they get a two on the Z. And that's not the answer. Because as we know from our basic math review and our beginning of pre-algebra review. Anytime you have two negatives, two negatives make a what? Make a positive. So you, let's change, let's take a magenta and let's change that into a positive and change that into a positive. And now we got a totally different animal than what you thought we were going to have. Four plus one is five. You owe three dollars, you owe two dollars, then you owe five dollars. And then z to the five plus three is eight. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of preview of coming attractions. In in the next section, in the next video, you're going to be introduced to the inverse rule. I showed you those those, those, when we talked about the quotient rule and the product rule, I showed you those, uh, there's about eight exponential rules, and one of them was called the inverse rule, and that's where you can, all this is over one, and I can take this guy because he's negative, and I can bring him downstairs, and I would get z to the fifth, I'm sorry, x to the fifth, I'm, I don't know what's wrong with me x to the fifth, z to the eighth, over y to the fifth. Now, I'm going to put this in kind of a cloud because you're going to learn that later. This is your answer right now. This is simplified. But you will see when we get into the Algebra 1 review and we introduce all of the exponential laws, you're going to see the inverse law, and you're going to see it make that y to the negative fifth come down, and it's going to make it positive. And you may remember that from, you know, if you've had algebra one or pre-algebra and algebra one and algebra two, you may remember that by seeing it just then. You may remember that the negative exponent, we want to make it positive, so we bring it down. But anyway, 
that's another example of how to simplify a function down to its simplest form. Again, we're not solving. We are simplifying. Okay? So let's do another one. And this time, I'm going to keep it kind of like that one, but I'm going to add some coefficients to it. Let's go with 2x to the fifth, y to the third, z to the first, over 4x to the third, y to the negative third, z to the fifth. All right, pause the video and work on that problem and see what you come up with. Now, as you can see, this one has coefficients. Let's see how you did. First of all, I'm going to break everything up. And you don't have to do this. Remember, I'm teaching people that have forgotten how to do this. So if it comes back to you, that's great. Uh, but I'm going to teach pretty basic, so that way people can remember at their own rate. So, I'm going to break this up into 2 over 4. x to the 5th over x to the 3rd. y to the 3rd over y to the negative 3rd. z to the 1st over z to the 5th. Now, the most common mistake here is students will mark that y to the 3rd over y to the negative 3rd. They'll mark that out and say that that cancels. And automatically, they have gotten the whole problem wrong. Okay, you can't assume things just because you look at it and think it's think that's what happens. That that's not that doesn't that doesn't work. So the two over four from basic math, we know that that reduces down to one half. And then this is going to be x to the five minus three over one. Now I have a fraction, that one half is out there, so I'm going to make everything a fraction and then fix it with the inverse rule as we go along. Okay, y to the 3 minus negative 3 over 1 and z to the 1 minus 5 over 1. And that's going to give us 1 over 2 times x to the second over 1. Remember, let's take our highlighter because there's two, there's two negatives. So that means I'm going to take my magenta pen and I'm going to do a plus there. And that gives me y to the sixth over 1. And then 1 minus 5, you have $1. You owe $4, $5. Therefore, you still owe $4. I'm sorry, I just messed that up. The, the answer's right, I just put it in the wrong place. So that's going to be Z to the negative 4 over 1. Now, remember, I showed you that inverse rule, and I'm going to go ahead and show it to you now. The inverse rule states 
that if you have 1 over x to the negative 1 or x to the negative 1 over 1, wherever you have a negative exponent, you would like to make it into a positive. And the way you do that is you flip the fraction and it makes it positive. Or flip this one and that makes that positive. So that's the inverse rule. I think it's like number five or six on that sheet that we brought up off of Google. And, and hopefully if you've had pre-algebra or algebra before, you remember that. So with this function right here, we have a negative exponent. So we're going to flip that one. And that's going to give us 1 over 2 times x squared over 1 times y to the 6th over 1 times 1 over z to the 4th. And now we just put everything together and we hit x squared y to the 6th over 2z to the 4th. Now, at this point, you're probably saying to yourself, good gracious, that's a lot of work. It is a lot of work for a person that's reviewing all of this, but some of you looking at this video, you probably did a lot of the canceling up here, and you went, well, let's see. That two, we're going to two one time, we're going there two times. That cancels, and that makes this a 2, and this comes up, so that will be a 6, and then that's going to be a negative 4, and that negative 4 is going to come down, and you're going to cancel that out. Now, some of you may have done that, but I'm not going to teach that in a review class because that's not what a review is. The review is to show you all of this, and then you, after working a few problems, figure out that you can do this. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, I've shown you three or four exponentially led expressions. Now let's do a polynomial or a uh, multi-term, whatever you want to call it. Um, expression. 2x, oh my goodness, I don't know how that happened. I didn't hit anything, but all of a sudden my pen has gone to extra whatever. 2x plus 4 over 2. Now that is an expression. And we can, I'm going to introduce something to you right now called factoring. And factoring is kind of like pulling out something that's in common. It's called factoring out a common term. Now, if you've had pre-algebra or Algebra 1 before, you remember this. Whenever there is something in common with two terms or more, you can factor out that term. So what is in common with 2x and 4. Well, most of you should come to the conclusion, well, there's a 2. Uh, 2 will go into 2, and 2 will go into 4. So I'm going to factor that out. Think of it like a tablecloth. You know, when you pull a tablecloth out from a plate, you pull it real quick, and the tablecloth just sits, I mean, the uh, plate just sits there on the table, and the tablecloth comes out from under it. Think of it kind of like that. I'm going to factor out that 2. I'm going to pull it out there in front, and that's that's what that's pulling the the tablecloth out from under the plate, and the plate falls, and you're left with x plus two. Hold on just a second. Sorry about that. So we factored out a two, and that's kind of like you know pulling the tablecloth out from under the plate and the plate falls and when it falls 
it's x plus 2 instead of 2x plus 4. And that's over 2. And of course, 2 over 2 is 1. So we'll take a blue marker and we'll just cancel that out. And you're left with x plus 2. So again, here's your, here's your big... <clears throat> Your big block phone or bag phone and here is your smartphone well what does that mean well let's plug in x is equal to one or x is equal to two and that's going to give us two times two plus four over two two plus two is four four plus four is eight eight over two is four so when we plug 2 into this function, we get 4. Or we can plug 2 into our smartphone and get 2 plus 2 is equal to 4. We make the same phone call. It just takes longer with the brick phone than it does with the smartphone. And you will see these type. Now, I'm only limited to showing you these because I can't show you quadratics yet because we haven't got that far yet. This is just pre-algebra and this is just going over a few things um, that you can do, you know, besides combining like terms. We talked about that in the last video and this is expressions. Okay, so let's do one more and I'll try to try to make it challenging. Let's go with 4x plus 16 over 2x plus 8. So pause the video and work on that and see what you can come up with. Okay, how'd you do? Well, let's go ahead and factor out a 4 on the top. And I'm going to use a blue marker because I'm pulling that, that tablecloth out from the table or the plate. And the plate falls down and I get x plus what? 4. Oops, I don't want to do that. The blue is pulling the tablecloth out. That gives x plus 4. And I'm going to pull the tablecloth out of the bottom. And what's in common with 2 and 8? A 2. And that leaves me with x plus what? 4. Now I've got two things to do before I finish this problem. Somebody tell me. Um, of course, I don't have anybody here. Um, this is videos. But what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to take my red marker, and I'm going to cancel these two out because anything over itself is 1. So that cancels to 1. And then 4 over 2 is 2 over 1. So this whole thing cancels to 2. So your brick phone, if I plug in x is equal to 1, I'm going to get 4 times 1 plus 16 over 2 times 1 plus 8. And that's going to give me 20 over 10, which is 2. So whatever I plug into this function, I'm going to get 2, just like this one says. So we just... Now that one is more of a polynomial, monomial, polynomial, I'm sorry, polynomial. You've got a x to the first here and an x to the zero here. So you've got two terms in each one. So anyway, to make a long story short, you just canceled and found out that you've got a constant for a simplified function of two.
What does that mean? Well, let's plug in 2. X is equal to 2. Put a 2 here. Put a 2 here. 8 plus, or 8 plus 16 is 24. And 4 plus 8 is 12. 24 divided by 12 is 2. So whatever you plug in to this function, you're going to get a 2. And the reason you know that is because you simplified and you took this you took this cell phone part and you made the part smaller and now you got a smartphone. So that's how you simplify expressions, whether it be uh, exponents or whether it be a expression made with terms. You, you have to find a way. Now later in Algebra 1 and Algebra 2, you're going to be factoring bigger polynomials and you're actually going to, you know, factor and then cancel things out, the cancel out factors of 1. And that is simplifying. Next, we're going to talk about solving equations. Solving equations is when you actually have a equal sign. Now, when you're solving an equation, there's different steps, there's different levels. Um, there's basic one-step equations, which I talked to you before. Um, I gave you an exam four examples in the previous uh, video. X plus 3 is equal to 6. X minus 2 is equal to 7. 2X is equal to 6. And X over 4 is equal to 2. Now, those are four basic operations. Now, behind those basic operations is the equal sign. And the equal sign means that one side... Whatever you do on one side, you do on the other side. In order to get rid of, and your main objective of algebra, your main objective, oops, your main objective of algebra is to get the variable when solving an equation, to get the variable by itself. Okay, and I want you to write that down because when you're talking about solving equations, that is the main objective of algebra, of solving equations, to get the variable by itself. So that means I need to get x by itself. So I've got to get rid of a positive 3. How do you get rid of a positive 3? You subtract 3. If you do it on one side... You do it on the other. Now, I also teach that if the equal sign is the river and you take the 3 across the river, it becomes a negative 3. You will hear me say both as a teacher. You may hear other teachers say, take the 3 across the river. That means the same thing as if you subtract 3 on one side, you have to subtract 3 on the other. Both give you the same answer of x is equal to 3. That means your solution is 3. Now, we also need to check it. So that means we're going to plug 3 back into the equation. x plus 3 is equal to 6. And we plug that 3 in right here where the x was. And, of course, we get 6 is equal to 6. And that is how you solve a one-step equation. So, let's look at x minus 2. How do you get rid of owing $2? You pay $2. Or you can say, I'm going to take the 2 across the river, and when I take it across the river, it becomes a negative 2. However you like to do that is up to you. And that gives us x is equal to 5. So I rewrite my problem. 
parentheses minus two. Brain and my hands not working together today. X minus two is equal to seven. And I take that five and I plug it in for X. And I just messed up. Sorry about that. Let me go ahead and see, and my check told me that I messed up. When I take the two across the river, it turns into a positive two. My mistake. There we go. And the check told me that. So that gives me x is equal to nine. And I rewrite x minus two is equal to seven. And that 9 goes in here, and now I get 7 is equal to 7. And you see, I did that on purpose so we can see the check actually work. I'm just kidding. I made a mistake. So anyway, our solution to this equation is x is equal to 9. Now, what is the opposite of multiplying by 2? The opposite of multiplying by 2 is dividing by 2. And if you divide by 2 on one side, you have to divide by 2 on the other. And that gives us x is equal to 3. And that is our solution, so now we need to check it. 2 times parentheses is equal to 6. Plug that 3 back in, and we get 6 is equal to 6. So it does check. And now the last one, x over 4 is equal to 2. How do you get rid of, or how do you undo, dividing by 4? You multiply by 4. And, <coughs> excuse me. And if you multiply on one side by 4, you have to multiply on the other side by 4. And that gives us x is equal to 8. And that is your solution. Now remember, most of you have seen this before, and most of you are taking using this video as a review. So I am assuming that when you are looking at this from a review standpoint, that you're going, oh yeah, I remember how to do that. Okay? So that's why I'm kind of going through this real quick, because the next couple of slides, we're going to go into a little bit of things that you should have seen before and you're kind of rusty on. So that's going to give us parentheses over 4 is equal to 2. And that 8 goes right there. 8 divided by 4 is equal to 2, and it does check. So that, those are one-step equations, and you can put in, there, put in your notebook one step because... You have one step. You just divide, you, you subtracted by three, that's one step. You added two, that's one step. You divided by two, that's one step. You multiplied by four, that's one step. Now, most people, 99.9% .9 of the students that go through this, you they go, oh yeah, I remember I do that, that's easy. And that's fine. The next screen, we're going to actually do some multi step. What is multi-step, Hubert? Well, that's when you do several things. One, you combine like terms. Combine like terms. Two, you use the distributive law. And three, Clear fractions or decimals. And I'm going to show you a couple of each, so therefore you know, you know, what's the difference between the three are. Now the first one is pretty simple. The first one is going to be, here's an example of combining like terms. I'll just go to the next. You can pause the video and write those down if you need to. That's a good thing about videos. You can pause them whenever you need to take a break and write something down. But anyway, combining like terms. Here's an example of combining like terms. 4x plus 
3x minus 2 is equal to 8x minus 1. Now there is an example of a multi-step slash combining like terms problem. Okay, what do you do first? Well, you notice that on the left side, you've got two x's. And one of the rules of, of algebra is consolidate whenever you can, okay? Or get all the x's together, or however you want to say it. 4x plus 3x is 7x. I combine like terms, and I got 7x. Bring the negative 2 down, 8x minus 1. Now, at this point, I do things a little bit differently than other teachers. What do you mean, Hubert? I tell students it's nice to keep the variable positive. And 90% of the time, you can do that. So I put right here, for my students, always try to keep the variable positive by moving the smallest bucket. You know, if you work on a farm and you're told to feed the cows or the pigs or whatever, are you going to use a 50-gallon bucket or are you going to use a 5-gallon bucket? Most people use a smaller bucket, not because they want to work harder, because it's easier to handle. And I always tell students to move the smallest bucket. Now, what is your objective? Well, in the previous problem, we said that the objective was moving the... Sorry, I was going to move that, but anyway... The objective is to get the variable by itself. So the variable is priority. So I'm going to highlight the variable green because that means that I only care about the variable. I really don't care about the number, okay? So I care about this term, and I care about that term. The 2 and the 1 I really don't care about because that's going to fall into place like a tail follows a kite, okay? You know, a kite that you, that you have in the air, you know, flying a kite. The tail always follows the kite. The numbers are going to follow the variable. You just need to get the variable on one side and consolidate it. Now I ask my students, what's the smaller bucket, 7x or 8x? 7x. And I move the 7 across the river. And when I move it across the river, it becomes negative 7x. Now a lot of people say, Hubert, that's not the way I was taught. Well, I'm going to go right here, and I'm going to go, we're going to, we're going to go off of academia right here. We're going to stray away from academia, and we're going to go over here, and we're going to go into the real world. And you go to a park here in Anderson, and you got two kids. One's named Jody and one named Susie. And here in Anderson, there's a seesaw. And in Anderson, you tell Jody, Jody gets on this side. And you're standing here looking at the seesaw, so he's on the left side. And Susie's on the right side. And they play on that, and then they play on the swing, and then y'all leave. And then y'all go down to Star Athletic Complex, or you go to another, you go to McLeese School when they got a seesaw, whatever. There's another seesaw somewhere else. Somewhere else, there's another seesaw, and you're standing there looking at it. And Jody gets on this side, and Susie gets on this side, and you have a fit. And you say, no, you can't do that, Jody. You have to get on the left-hand side, and Susie has to get on the right-hand side. That makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. So if, you, if you're told that you have to put the X's on the left-hand side, that's the same way as telling your children that they have to sit on the same side of the seesaw whenever they go to a different seesaw in a different area. So if you go to Denver, Colorado and visit family and your kids get on the seesaw, 
than they have to get on the same side in Colorado than they got in Anderson. That makes no sense whatsoever. So with that being said, I'm going to keep my variable positive by moving it to the biggest side. Okay? And that makes me have, that goes out, and that leaves me with a positive 1x. Now I'm going to take the 1 across the river, and that gives me a plus 1. And now my answer is x. We don't need the 1. It's right there, but I'm going to dot it because you don't need to put it in the answer. And you owe $2, and you have a dollar, so you owe one dollar and your solution is x is equal to negative one now how do you check that i would plug it into this function right here because you've consolidated so here we go seven times negative one minus two is equal to eight times negative one minus one what is seven times negative one that's negative seven Negative 7 minus 2 is negative 9. Negative 8 minus 1 is negative 9. So the answer is correct. We checked it and it is correct. Now that is how you do a combining like term multi-step equation. So let's try another one. Let's try, let's let you try this one and you pause the video and you work it and see what you come up with. Negative 2x plus 7x plus 3 is equal to negative 2x minus 8. Now pause the video and work this problem. Okay, let's see how you did. Well, I see right quick that I have two X's right here, and I'm going to combine those first. So, negative 2X plus 7X is 5X. You owe $2. You have seven dollars if you pay off your debt you still have five dollars plus three is equal to negative 2x minus eight what is our objective our objective is the x our objective and i'm going to put this in highlighted blue our objective is the x values i want to keep the variable positive, so I'm going to move the smallest bucket. The smallest bucket is the negative 2x. So I'm going to move this negative 2x because this is the smallest bucket. I'm going to move it across the river and it becomes a positive 2x. And now I get 7x plus 3 is equal to negative 8. Now I have my x together, I'm good. Now how do I get rid of a positive three? I take it across the river and it becomes a negative three. As Soon as it crosses the river, it becomes a negative three. And that will give us seven x is equal to negative 11, how do you get rid of multiplying by 7? You divide by 7, and that gives us x is equal to negative 11 over 7. Now, a lot of students will ask me, as we talked about in the basic math and pre-algebra, uh, the mathematics review, Hubert, will you change that into a mixed number? No, I will not. Why? One, did I start with a mixed number? 
No, I did not start with a mixed number, so I don't need a mixed number. Did the direction say, well, we don't have directions. You're just going with what I said. I directed you to solve the equation. I did not say anything about a mixed number, so you don't have to worry about that. So it didn't start with a mixed number. I didn't direct you to have a mixed number. And three, is there a unit of measurement? No. So if those three are not a mixed number, then you just leave it as negative 11 over 7. So let's try one more. And I'm going to let you work this one. Let's go with 3x plus 8 is equal to negative 2x minus 5x plus 2, or minus 2. There we go. So pause the video and take a minute to work this problem and see what you come up with. Okay, how'd you do? Well, I'm going to highlight my common terms. So I owe $2 and I owe $5. So if I owe $2 and I owe $5, I owe $7. So 3x plus 8 is equal to negative 7x minus 2. Now I got to move my smallest bucket. Well, where is my smallest bucket? My smallest bucket is negative 7x. If you don't believe me, what would you rather have in the bank? Negative $700 or $300? Most of you would want $300. So $300 is greater than negative $700. So I'm going to move that across the river. And as soon as I move it across the river, it becomes a what? A positive 7x. So now I have 10x plus 8 is equal to negative 2. And now I'm going to take that 8 and take it across the river. And when I take it across the river, it becomes a negative 8. And that gives me 10x is equal to negative 10. How do you undo multiplying by 10? You divide by 10. X is equal to negative 1. Now, I'm not going to check it, but you should. I'm, I'm not going to put it there. Put it in that one because it's less it's condensed. 3 times negative 1 plus 8 is equal to negative 7 times negative 1 minus 2. And see if it checks out. Now that is how you do multi-step equations with combining like terms. Now let's do a distributive law. Now a while ago when we did factoring out a common term, the opposite of factoring out a common term is called the distributive law. The distributive law basically says A times B plus C is equal to AC plus A, I'm sorry, AB plus AC. In other words, I can distribute that A and multiply it by every term. That's called the distributive law. Again, this is a pre-algebra review, so most of you have had pre-algebra. You should have seen that before. And it is the opposite of the factoring rule. The factoring rule says if I have something in common, I can bring it out and get A times B plus C. So this is factoring. And the opposite of factoring is distributive law. So with that being said, 
we're going to use the distributive law to solve some of these equations. Example one, two times x plus four is equal to three times x minus two. Now in this case, you can't do anything first because the, I like to tell students that the x plus four and the x minus two is a block of concrete. And you can't move that block of concrete until you bust it up. And the two and the three is the hammer. So you want to bust up that block first because you can't move x plus four and you can't move x minus two. So you're going to bust it up by this hammer and this hammer. And now we get two times x is two x plus two times four is eight. Three times x is three x and three times negative two is negative six. Now you have a combining like terms and you need to get the x's by themselves and positive preferably. <coughs> so which one is the smallest bucket? That's the smallest bucket, so you're going to move it across the river, and it becomes a negative 2x. And that's going to give you 8 is equal to, and I'm going to dot that x in because you don't need to write it, it's just there, minus 6. And now I'm going to take that minus 6, and I'm going to take it across the river, and it becomes a positive 6. And now my answer is x is equal to 14. So let's check it out. What's 14 plus 4? 14 plus 4 is 18. 18 times 2 is 36. What's 14 minus 2? 12. 12 times 3 is 36. So when we plug 14 back in, we check it and it becomes, it is the correct answer. Now that is called the factoring rule. Let's try another one. Let's try one that might cause you a little problem. Negative three times x plus two minus four is equal to negative three times x minus six plus two. Now, I want you to pause the video and I want you to use your distributive law, combine like terms, and solve the equation. Now, how did you do? Well, you got to remember one thing about this problem. When you're distributing a negative, when you're distributing a negative, you have to be very careful because that negative changes everything in the problem. That negative will change this x to a negative and change that 2 to a negative. So instead of, you know, x plus 2, now you have negative 3x minus 6. And I'm going to draw that negative red because that is a major problem with students. They forget to do that. So you need to make a note of that. When you have a negative in front of the parentheses, it's going to cause trouble if, you, if you're not careful. So that's going to make this 
negative 3x plus 18. Now, as you notice, the distributive law makes the parentheses go away, just like the factoring rule makes the parentheses appear. So the fact the distributive law makes the fact that makes the parentheses disappear. Now we're going to combine like terms. Well, negative 3x, you owe six dollars, you owe four dollars, so you owe ten dollars. You have $18, you have $2, so you have $20. Which one's a smaller bucket? Oh gosh, the X's are the same. So they're going to cancel. Oh my gosh, what's going to happen here? They cancel because if you brought this over here, it would be a plus 3X. And plus 3x minus 3x is 0. If you brought this one over here, it would be plus 3x over here, and that would cancel. So the 3x is cancel. And you're left with negative 10 is equal to 20. Now, we have done the math correctly. This is called a contradiction. Let's write that down, a contradiction. A contradiction is when something doesn't make sense and you've done the math correctly. Not true. When you have a statement that is not true or not equal, the answer is no solution, meaning that this problem does not have a solution. We did the math correctly, and we came out with a problem that had a contradiction. A contradiction means it's not equal. Negative 10 is equal to 20. That's not equal. Negative x is equal to negative y. That's not equal. Uh, 2x is equal to star. Okay, something that doesn't make any sense. Most of the time it's going to be a number like negative 10 and positive 20. That's not equal. And when you have that, in other words, if you plugged in x is equal to 1, you would get nothing equal to each other. You would, it would not check. If you plugged in x is equal to 5, it would not check. There is no number that works in this equation. So the answer is no solution. Okay? So what happens if you get something that says true? Well, we'll do that in magenta. Let's say we get something that comes out, and I'm going to make this separate. You get 5 is equal to 5. Then that's called an identity. An identity means that you have a true statement. If you have a true statement, like 5 is equal to 5, then that means the solution is all real numbers. Meaning that you can plug any number into the problem and it will work. So when you're doing these type of problems, you're going to have two or three different answers. One answer is going to be like a, and I'm going to make this in black because it's most of the time you're going to get x is equal to a number. And that is called a solution. Most of the time, your answers are going to come out with a number. But every once in a while, a teacher will put one of these on a test or one of these on a test or a homework 
or a publisher will put that in a homework just to make sure that you're on your toes. And if you've done everything correctly and you come up with a contradiction, then there is no solution. If you come out with an identity, meaning that it's true statement, then your answer is all real numbers. But most of the time, you're going to come out with a solution. Most of the time. And that is how you do a distributive multi-step equation. Solve a distributive multi-step equation. Let's do one more, and then we'll move on to clearing fractions and decimals. And this is going to be 5x minus 3x plus 7 times x minus 2 is equal to 3 times x minus 6. Whoa, we got all kinds of things. We got to combine like terms. We got to distribute. So let's go ahead and combine like terms. Right now, I'm going to have to deal with these two first because I've got to distribute that 7 and that 3. So I'm going to go ahead and do it all at one time. I have $5. I owe $3. So that means I have $2. I'm going to distribute this positive 7 and this positive 3. How is it positive? Because I don't have a negative in front of it. And that will be plus 7x minus 14 is equal to 3x minus 18. Ah, I've got common denom I've got common factor. I've got, can't talk. Similar terms, combine like terms. So I'm going to highlight these guys. And what is 7 plus 9? I'm sorry, 7 plus 2. That's 9x minus 14 is equal to 3x minus 18. Here's our smallest bucket. So we're going to take it across the river and it turns into a negative 3x. So that's going to give us 6x minus 14 is equal to negative 18. Negative 14 goes across the river, and that becomes a positive 14. So our answer, our getting close, 6x, you owe $18, you have $14, so you still owe $4, and x is equal to negative 4 over 6. X is equal to negative 2 thirds. And that is a combining like terms, distributive law, multi-step equation. And now let's finish this video with Clearing the fractions and decimals. One half times x minus three is equal to three fourths times x minus seven. Now, you could distribute the one half and three fourths, and instead of having two fractions, you'll have four fractions. And if you'd like to do it that way, knock yourself out. But I'm going to multiply by the common denominator. So I'm going to multiply through on both sides by 4 over 1. Where did I get the 4? Well, what's the common denominator of 2 and 4? Four? 4. How did I do that? Well, I know it by practice, but 2, 4, 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, and sometimes 13 that we go over at the first of the video called 
Least common multiple. So I'm going to divide by two. Now give me a one and a two. Two, one, and one. We got our ones. There's our common denominator. Two times two is four. And that's how I knew to multiply through by four. Now I'm going to put a baby step in here for you. Four over one. And four over one. And then I'm going to put the other problem times one half x minus 3 equals times 3 fourths times x minus 7. And if you notice, you're going to cancel the 2 and the 4, and that leaves the 2 here, and those are going to cancel, which leaves the 3. So now we've got a distributive law problem. 2 times x minus 3 is equal to 3 times x minus 7. And now you have a distributive law problem instead of distributing fractions. So 2x, 2x minus 6 is equal to 3x minus 21. My smallest bucket is 2x, I take that across the river, and it becomes negative 2x. So that leaves me with negative 6, sorry. Negative 6 is equal to x minus 21. Take the 21 across the river. You owe $6, and you have $21. So you pay off your debt, you have $15 left. So 15 is equal to X. And that's how you clear the fraction. So let's do another one. Pause the video in case you got behind there. and You can finish writing everything out. Okay, so let's go to another one. One half times x minus three plus three fourths is equal to one third times x minus two plus one half. Oh my. We might as well quit on this one because we got too many fractions and I don't know how to do all that. Well, you write down your fractions. You go back to what we talked about, least common multiple. Two, three, and four. Two, three, five, seven, eleven, and sometimes thirteen. Two, one, three, that comes down, and two. Two, that comes down. That comes down, and one. Three. That comes down, one, and that comes down, one. We got our ones, so here is the common denominator. So I'm going to multiply through by 12 over one. Now I'm going to put a baby step in here because it's very important that I do that. So I'm going to put a 12 over one here. I'll put a 12 over 1 here, a 12 over 1 here, and a 12 over 1 here. And now, I'm going to write my problem. Times 1 half x minus 3 plus 3 fourths is equal to 1 third times x minus 2 plus 1 half. Get my red pen out because the whole purpose of multiplying through by the common denominator is so I can cancel some fractions out. Two will go into two one time, six times. I don't know why that came in there. Okay. Let's go back to the red pen. Four will go into four one time, go in there three times. Three will go into three one time, we'll go in there four times. 
Two will go into two one time, will go in there six times. So now I can rewrite my problem and just have distributive law and combining like terms. Six times x minus three plus nine, three times three is nine, equals four times x minus two plus six. And now you have a distributive law. Now, a lot of people say, well, Hubert, you didn't multiply through by the parentheses. I can't touch it. It's a block of concrete. I can't touch it until I bust it up with the hammer. Now, I'm fixing to bust it up with the hammer. And there's no fractions in there, so I don't have to worry about it. So, 6x minus 18. I don't know why there's a mark there that says equals this thing. It gets crazy when I get on the left side of the room. It just goes crazy. There we go. Plus 9 is equal to 4x minus 8 plus 6. And of course now I have common terms. So now I've got to combine them. And that gives me 6x minus 18. I owe $18, and I have 9 in my pocket. So that means I still owe 9 bucks. You owe $8, you have 6, you still owe 2. Smallest bucket is 4x. So I move that across the river, that gives me 2x. I'm skipping some steps because of room. And bring the 9 over, that's going to give me 7. And x is equal to 7 halves. And that is how you clear fractions. So now let's clear a decimal. Now. Before I clear a decimal, I need to go back, and we talked about multiplying and dividing by tens and hundreds. So I'm going to go over that right quick. When we multiply by 10, multiply by 100, multiply by 1,000, and so on, what is the rule? The rule is you count the number of zeros. And then you multiply, you move to the right, to the right, the number of the number of times. Okay, remember doing that? Move to the right that number of times. So if I have four zeros, I move to the right four places. If I have three zeros, I move to the right three places. Two zeros, I move to the right two places, and one zero, I move to the right one place. If I'm dividing by 10, and we'll do this over here, if I divide by 10, or divide by 100, or divide by 1,000, or divide by 10,000, and so on, you count the number of zeros, and you move to the left that number of times. So just remember that little trick. When you're multiplying by base 10, you can move to the right when you multiply and move to the left when you divide. Now with that being said, I'm going to write a problem on the board. It's going to be very simple. Point zero 0.01x plus 1 equals point zero 0.02x minus 6. Now here is a problem that we have decimals. The first thing you do when you have decimals in a problem is you find, look at all the decimals. Okay, I've got two decimals in this problem. I'm going to highlight them. There's one decimal, and there's the other decimal. 
Notice number two. What is the furthest place value? What is the furthest place value? Now, what I mean, I know that's not grammatically correct, but the furthest place value in this problem is the tenth, the hundredth, tenth, hundredth, tenth, hundredth, is the hundredth. Okay, now if I had a tenth here, if I had a tenth here and a hundredth here, then you'd, it'd be the hundredth. The furthest place value. Remember, the furthest place value. We're going to do an example here in a minute, and it's going to have two different ones. I'm just, I'm just going through a basic one right now. Three. Multiply. I'm sorry. Multiply by <clears throat> number two, whatever the furthest place value is, to clear. So, I come up with the hundredth place value here and the hundredth place value here, so I'm going to multiply everything by 100. Now, when I multiply by 100, I move the decimal two places to the right. And that gives me 1 times x plus 1 equals 2 times x minus 6. And now you have a problem with the distributive law. x plus 1 is equal to 2x minus 12. Smallest bucket. Take across the river. 1 is equal to 1x minus 12. Take that across the river. 13 is equal to x. And that's how you clear a decimal. All right, let's try one more. This one's not very difficult because you can do everything in one little step. So I'm going to make the problem a little bit more difficult, but the decimal is not that big a deal. Okay, there's our, there's our problem. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of the decimals that are in play. Now, if there was decimals in the parentheses, you can't do anything with those until you distribute. So we're not going to worry about what's in the parentheses right now. So now you decide what's the furthest place value. Well, this one's the tenth. This one's the tenth. This one's the hundredth. This one's the hundredth. So the furthest place value is the hundredth. So I'm going to multiply everything by 100. So that's going to move two places to the right. One, two. One, two. Sorry. One, two. One, two. So now... I have 10 times x minus 6 plus 60 is equal to 5 plus 3. And now you're ready to do the problem. 10x minus 60 plus 60 equals 5x minus 15 plus 3. And remember to multiply by the x and the 3 and to multiply by the x and the 6 because that's where students mess up. Now in this case, our x's, I mean our 60's, they go out. So that leaves us with 10x is equal to 5x and you owe 15 
you have three. So if you owe $15 and you pay $3 on that $15 debt, you still owe $12. Smallest bucket, 5x is equal to negative 12. x is equal to negative 12 fifths. And that's how you clear fractions, you clear decimals, and you distribute. Now, in the next video, we're going to be working on linear and how to do linear equations.